Hey y'all, what y'all saying? Anthony Care back with another video. So I am on a journey to have healthier hair, healthier scalp, and I'm actually on a twist, having a twist challenge right now. I have several videos on that. So I'm gonna link them in the eye hair or down below so you can come up to speed with what the twist challenge is. So along with that, I want to know exactly what's happening with my hair and my scalp. And so I have invested in a microscope. I am so excited. I love science. I love knowing exactly what's happening with anything. So naturally, I want to know exactly what's happening with my hair, what are the strong areas, what are the weak areas, and also to see how products are affecting my hair strands and my scalp. So we're gonna go through that journey. You're gonna see me with a week old hair. That means everything that I have done to my hair through that week. And then also wash day and see how my hair and scalp looks. After that, I am so excited. So excited. Okay. I saw several YouTubers, probably three of them, I've watched videos where they went into their hair with the microscope and I'm like, I have to get me one of those immediately immediately so let's go let's check it out i'm going to be doing a commentary as we go through the different phases of what my hair is doing and exactly what you're looking at if blue can do we can too ah. okay let's get into this hair and scalp okay <laughs> so let's begin so what you're looking at now is the crown section of my scalp um, this is one week post wash. I have um, I I was just spraying my hair with glycerin and water and aloe vera through the week, and this is no this is without my hair oiled. So I oiled on the night before my um, wash day, and so this is what my hair looks like. And I did I did not think that I produced sebum at all, but as you can see here, there is a whole host of sebum built up, cake up hard up because sebum tends to turn into a waxy product if you don't break it up so that's what you're looking at right now that's crazy and here this is the front section of my hair which tends to be a bit thinner so this week i about thursday of the week i had applied some black gel on my edges to slick it down and can you see how that gel is cake up on my scalp guys so this, like I said, this is my nape area. And my nape area is a bit thinner than the crown. This is my more of my 4C section. And my crown, the crown of my hair tends to be, I mean, A is more 4B. So you can see all the sebum. And let's get into these strands. So after, I was just moving the microscope around to find things. And as something jumped out to me, I would focus, try to focus on it. So right now you can see that I am focusing on a split in my strand. There are split ends and then your hair splits along the strand. So where do you win? You, you really just have to be careful with handling your hair and the maintenance of it and make sure because you, your hair can break from the middle and not necessarily split ends. Okay, so I'm just moving along the strands um, just to look and see how it is. It may just be my mind, but I mean, but it's not impossible to believe that my hair is thinner as it gets on the end because this is the more old and abused part of our hair, so it looks thinner. It looks a bit brown, but I'm thinking because of the pre other videos, that's how the, oh, there we go, another split end. I'm trying to focus on it. Yeah, so I think my hair is predominantly black. It just depends on how the light catches it sometimes. And we are looking at more, and whew, you can see a split on a gray strand. You're gonna encounter a lot of gray strands throughout this video, okay? Look at it. That is splitty, split, split. And um, so I'm just scrolling down for more. And here we have a single strand knot. Do you see that? Do you see how tight that knot is? Like that that one name over. Like how do you now this one 
if you can see it with your, your eye, you can probably take a needle and un undo it, but who is going to undo single strand knots in your hair strand? So that is how knots look in your hair. And how did you get, like, how did they do, I don't know. I don't know how that happened, but that is a whole knot in the middle of a strand. So now we're looking at the more of the ending part of my hair, like right here. And this is where I usually apply flaxseed gel. So what you're seeing now is what it looks like microfibers. Oh, there goes another split end. Ooh, that's a good split. <laughs> that's a good split. So sometimes the flaxseed gel looks very fibrous, like very thready, but then you can see Right, can you see that? So that's not really lint. That's the flaxseed gel that I apply to the ending part of my strands just to give it an, another hold. And further down, you're gonna see um, flaxseed gel on freshly washed hair and how it looks compared to this one. Okay, so that is the flaxseed gel section. What did you hit, sir? They are all in there, like. So here is a gray strand. We're gonna get more into that later on. But can you see, yeah, anyway, we're gonna look more into the gray strand later. I'm just showing you more flaxy gel going on here. And here is a gray strand. So I tried to pause it. Do you see, gray strand isn't like white hair growing out of your hair, it's transparent. That is what gray strands are. Strands that did not get any melanin inside of it or it got bleached or dyed. There's some chemical reaction that happens in a follicle. I'll follow that up later. And it actually cre it creates a lack of me melanin in your strand. And so that's how your hair looks. It's actually see-through. It's not white. Okay. So just looking more into the scalp and you can see which is interesting enough you can see like multiple strands growing out of one pore or follicle um, and that's that's interesting um, just checking them out so for the most part it looks like two strands grow out of one of my pore, um, follicle but I'm looking here too and do you see these thin ones so I have to be careful about that like why do I why are my hair strands coming in a bit thinner um, I know I need I needed to do better with my diet and with water intake, so I've been working on that. And I'll check back and see. Oh, did you see that? Did you see how my scalp just pulse? I had to do that in slow motion. What was going on? Why would your scalp pulse? But anyway, so that's what's going on there. Okay, let's continue. So here we are looking at. Oh my God, can you see it? Here we are looking at. A certain section of my hair that I targeted let's say it was the section so at the root of it what you're looking at is the scalp and you can see the buildup you can see some composites of the sebum inside of it so I wanted to show you a before what I'm going to do now is take I used these parts not my nail and did a light massage to break that up so what you're looking at now is my scalp in that same area after I did a scalp massage. So you can see the sebum isn't so accumulated in the pores. Like I told you, I did not think I had sebum at all. I went one week before without oiling my hair just to test it out. And child honey, it just felt really dry. I was like, there is no sebum. And I just did that test and I looked at my, my finger to see if there's any like big time oil and there wasn't but now looking at the microscope you kind of have an idea of what's coming out of your scalp with the sebum is sufficient if you um it's sufficient for that area though because us curly girls kinky girls kinky girls um that sebum you can see how it turns into wax so if you're not diligent in massaging your scalp daily and then perhaps pulling that down to cover your follicles you probably will not benefit um, completely from from 
just what comes out of your scalp, the sebum. Okay, the next section I'm gonna show you is my hair on wash day. So, after wash day, if you look at my scalp, you can see it is clean, face clean, eh? Ooh. Anyway, so you can see there is no buildup of sebum in my pores at all. My hair looks like it's living its best life. Um, there is no buildup residue. What you're seeing on my strands is the water glycerin and my leave-in conditioner, which is the water glycerin and aloe vera um, that I spray. And then I, this time I took my Ayurvedic oil and sealed my hair with that instead of the castor oil. And I tried to make sure, particularly with the crown section, with any section not to get any product on my scalp so you can see the true thing but this section you're looking at now this is my nape and because it's so much thinner if i spray i imagine the glycerin just makes it on the scalp or if i do my fingers to put the oil on the strand it makes it on the scalp so that's why this section even though this is the next day after wash day it looks a bit oily so that is not oil scalp and that is not sebum that is just some of the products probably getting in that area because I literally scanned this area right here just so you can have an idea of how it looks and that's it guys okay we lost daylight um, but we're gonna push through with this last part so what we're looking at now is the flaxseed gel on the ends of my hair and look at how look at how it really bonds the strands together um, it almost looks like like crystal um, or frost or snowflake, whatever. But you can see where it's really, I'm going to put a still in there. So you can see how it's really holding the strands together. And that's basically how the flaxseed gel works. Um, and that you can see how that will probably help with the low manipulation when it comes to keeping that hair especially the older part of your strands really intact we want to treat we want to protect our ends at all costs that's what i say okay it's a must if you want to see length retention and so just going down my strand you can see where it is clean it has shine to it um you can't see any build up really no, yeah, you can't see build up now. How the glycerin looked a bit built up in through the week, that's something I probably have to address with the application of the glycerin. But other than that, that's my hair, that's the strands. This is more along the ending part of it. But like I said, you don't see any dirt, any accumulation. It's just nice and clean, and that's what we want from our strands. Nice, clean hair. So, what have I learned? I have learned that I have learned that a little really truly do go a long way when it comes to product in your hair. You know, we sometimes we joke about it, especially with girls with thicker, dense hair. Not particularly mine, but other persons. Um, we tend to we tend to laugh when the instruction is to put a dime size amount on our hair, but no, a dime size really do go a long way. The, the, my strands that you were looking at, they were, oh my God, so annoying. Okay, so that completes that section. I am very excited about this microscope and all the adventures in my scalp and my hair just to show different things so i have i already have a few ideas of what i want to do in reference to i'm gonna i'm willing to experiment with my hair just to see how things are in reference to how your hair reacts to products what products look like on your hair how oil looks like on your hair and your scalp in particular because there is a debate going on now about oiling your scalp now i'm not talking about greasing um we can already get that grease is a bit thick on the scalp but oils and i have been doing some research into oils 
which ones are maybe a bit too heavy for your scalp as well and a lot of them are included in a lot of these hair growth oil um, and Ayurvedic oils but is it too heavy for your scalp in terms of clogging your pores or aren't they? So we have a lot of videos coming up with this microscope. I am going to beat this microscope dead bad and yeah I can't wait for all of the adventures so stay tuned.